Hey, this video will show you how to register the Excel add-in. So hopefully you can get going and test it out. So the first thing is um, your Excel probably looks like this, maybe a little different. Mine's, uh, I think, Excel 2013. So what we want to do is add the add-in first of all. You may have already done this, but I'll just walk you through it anyway. You can either go to the file menu and choose add-ins. Ooh, maybe not that. Let me just... Uh, it's options, sorry. In options, there's add-ins there, and you can choose Manage Excel Add-ins here and click Go. Alternatively, you can click the Developer tab if you've got that. Click the Add-ins button there, and it will open up exactly the same dialog box. You find your Excel Add-in where you've saved it. Um, and you click the browse button, navigate to where it is, give it a click, and then it'll pop up here in this add-ins dialog box. And this is my one here, Amazon V0.10. Just give it a tick, click OK, and then you'll notice you've got this extra toolbar that will appear at the top. So the next step then is to click on that, and you can see all these um, lovely buttons. Go to the settings menu, and oops opened in a on a different screen so the first thing to do is go to the add-in license key tab and that's where you need to enter the license key that i sent you so i'm going to copy and paste that actual license key in i'm going to paste it in here there we go and click activate and if all is okay oh this one isn't it says a license key you entered is already registered. Okay, give me one second and I'm, I'm going to check my website to have a look at that. CF, oh yeah. Uh, you know what? I think you've just activated it right now. <laughs> so that's why mine failed. So hopefully it actually works for you at the moment. But anyway, I'll carry on with this video. Let me uh, pop in another license key that I'm using. Here we go. So I'll click activate on this other one. There we go, and it's activated, and I get the little OK button. That's fantastic. Next thing is, you need to enter your MWS settings. And this is where you need to go to the Amazon website and register yourself um, to actually use the Amazon MWS APIs. I'll show you what mine look like here. Um, and I guess I need to grey them out for secrecy. Um, but you just need to copy and paste your seller ID, AWS key, AWS access key ID, secret key, and Amazon Marketplace ID. Now, one thing I've done, there's four items of data here, and most services just ask you to enter your seller ID and maybe the AWS access key ID, and that's all you need. Well, I thought it'd be better to give the user full control of this. So when you use this software and you enter the criteria here, the credentials, only you have access to your seller account on Amazon. If you use things like ScanPower, Inventory Labs, all the other um, companies that ask you to register your MWS settings, they actually keep a copy of the details and um, I'm sure they won't, but if they wanted to, they could access your account through the APIs and do whatever they want. I thought, well, it's better, me personally, I want to keep everything private. So I've set this up in this way. So you need to put your put all four items of data in, and that will allow you to keep full control of your Amazon MWS settings. Now, if I bring in a website, um, MWS. I'll just show you where you can register that. I guess that's the wrong one. And it keeps. There we go. Um, yeah, I'll go to this one in the UK. Here we go. So uh, I think the .com is just developer.amazonservices.com. Um, the UK one is this website and let's see there's a login somewhere i think it's just this one actually click sign up for mws 
Now I'm already logged in, but what you want to do is say, I want to access my own seller account with MWS. And that means only you can access it using the credentials. When you click next, it gives a little tick box to say, yep, I read and accepted the terms and conditions. Click next and then you're going to get given that criteria that you can enter into the application. So you get the seller ID, marketplace, you get a developer account number. You don't need to uh, use that with the application, but you get the AWS access key ID and the secret key. Keep this safe. Um, because you only ever get shown this once by Amazon. If you want to see it again and you've lost it, just do exactly the same thing. I think they actually show you the same keys, but keep it safe, um, save it as a text file, something like that. But the items that you get given are what you need to pop in to the Excel add-in. Once you've done that, click the validate button. And if you've entered everything correctly, you'll get a message box like this, just telling you, yep, your Amazon seller ID validated successfully, and that's it, you're ready to go. Then all you need to do is start using the tool. So the first thing is I've got no UPC codes, ASINs here. So I'm gonna show you an example just using some text. So a lot of people last year, last Christmas, were selling uh, frozen toys. So let's do a, a search for frozen Elsa. How's that? So if I highlight the actual text that I've keyed in and click the text search, it's just going to do a basic search as though you're going to Amazon searching on this keyword frozen. Oh, I put else, didn't I? Let me put Elsa. <laughs> there we go. So it's going to search for frozen Elsa. So I'll click text and it should open another tab and it's going to bring back the first 10 results that it finds for that keyword. There we go. And it's formatted it. It gives us the ASIN, the title, the number of items, the category, sales rank, and so on. You can see all the data there. Um, this brings back a certain sort of subset of data that I've got set up by um, as my defaults. If you want to bring back more or less, just go to the settings button again. Oops, on a different screen. On the left hand side, you've got all the additional fields that you can add into the selected fields area on the right hand side. So if I wanted to find out what were the um, dimension height, the height units, so um, centimeters, meters, that type of thing, I can just highlight these things, click the button, add them there, choose OK. And now if I do this exact search again, it's going to bring me back the dimensions. So the same thing applies to all the other fields that we have here. Um, we can add them all in if we want. We can just do that, put them all in, and we'll have a ton of data coming back. I'm just going to click reset and go back to the defaults. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll remove some so I can just get the, the ace in the title, not number of items. Let's get the buy box price, wherever that is. That will be here we go, let's get the new buy box price. Landed price, new buy box. So I'll just say, give me give me four fields back. The first one being the search term. Click OK. I'm going to go back to the first sheet, run it again. And you can see it's just bringing back a much smaller set of data. There we go. And now the good thing is, look, I've got an ASIN to work with. So... Let me do a search on that. I'm just going to tell you what, I'll highlight these two, four. We've got six ASINs and I'm going to say do an ASIN search instead. And it will go away, look at every ASIN and bring back that data. Obviously, it's the same data that I've had on the other tab. But um, instead of me going and searching some more uh, demo stuff, it lets me it, it just shows you that we can use the ASIN for searching. We can use text for searching. If you do have UPC codes, just list them down, click the UPC code button. Now, one feature you don't see in any button here is um, one thing that I can add, and I think it'd be a great feature to be honest, is I'll choose equals. With a normal Excel function, you can choose equals and then start typing some formula. So if you wanted to, um, let's say sum, it starts to pop up there. 
Well, I've created one just as an example called Buy Box. I think it's called Buy Box, or it's New Buy Box Price. Here we go, New Buy Box Price. So if you select that as a function, you can then say, give me the new buy box price for this ASIN. Close the bracket, hit enter, and it brings it back, 144. Exactly the same sort of thing. So if I change this, say, A1, it's reference, oops, it's the wrong one. If I say A2 instead, there we go, it brings a buy box price for this one. So now with Excel, we know that we can sort of do this business. And this is looking at A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, an example. So hopefully this gives you an idea that if you're building spreadsheets up and you list your products, whether you've got the ACE in there, whether you've got, um, let's say you've got your own seller SKU in there, your FBA SKU, uh, I could add a function in to use SKU instead of the ASIN for the actual lookup. And you can just embed these functions within your, your spreadsheets. That's the idea anyway. Hopefully, this video will give you enough to um, get playing, test it out, see if there are any bugs. I'm sure there are. Um, but hopefully, you'll find it pretty useful. Um, I certainly do. I have loads of reports um, where I'm using these functions just to help me um, from going off to Amazon, finding the price, coming back in into the spreadsheet. This just helps me do it. And also when I'm sourcing products from wholesalers, they give me a full list of um, of UPC codes um, or in Europe, we normally use the EAN code. Um, then I can just set it off, check in thousands of products, you know, just let it run. I'll go away, pack some more boxes, come back and see all the results. Anyway, I hope this has been useful and I haven't waffled on too much. If you have any questions at all, if it doesn't work, any issues, please let me know.